Okay, so we're going to have a look at hypercubes and try and understand them using coordinates. So, first of all, if we look at just what is a regular cube, how can we express this in a nice way using coordinates? I've drawn this out. If you imagine I've got the x-axis going along here, I've got the y-axis going into the board there, and I've got the z-axis going up. Basically, I've got a unit cube here, in the sense that each of the side lengths is one unit. We've also started at the origin here, 0, 0, 0. I've done the same sort of picture in two dimensions, so your 2D equivalent of a cube is a square. We start at the origin, I've got the x-axis going the way along this way here, and the y-axis this time is going up. So, how do we define an n-dimensional hypercube? Well, we can define one in a very similar way to what we've got here, just using coordinates. You might notice this is basically all your vertices on a cube, on a square. These are all your combinations of zeros and ones that you can fit into here 2D space, or here it's 3D space. So we'll define our n-dimensional unit hypercube as the set of all n-dimensional coordinates in Euclidean space so that each of your coordinate entries is equal to either 0 or 1. And if you want to be more concise, you can write this as a Cartesian product, 0, 1 to the power of n. And using this sort of coordinate approach, we can actually discover a lot of properties, a lot of facts about n-dimensional hypercubes without having to draw them. So the first thing we'll look at is how many vertices does it have? Well. For the square and for the cube, it's pretty easy. You can just draw it and count them. But we're going to need to be more clever than that for n dimensions. Well, we certainly can't draw this. So if you imagine this is our general point on a hypercube. We're going to say, how many different combinations are there for this? Well, your first coordinate entry, this can be either a 0 or a 1. So there's two possibilities for this. And then once you've picked a 0 or you've picked a 1, You've got another two possibilities for this one. So this is going to multiply now and give you four options. So this is now kind of like where we've got the square. We've got four options for vertices from the first two entries. And of course for x3, you'll multiply by two again. So now you've got eight options. Then for each of these eight options, for your x4 entry, you multiply by two again. So that doubles the number of vertices you get and so on. You keep multiplying these together until you multiply by two finally, for an nth time. So this gives us 2 to the power of n vertices. So already, using these coordinates, we're starting to understand some nice properties of an n-dimensional hypercube. Next thing we're going to have a look at is a slightly harder problem, which is how many edges does an n-dimensional hypercube have? So this Again, for the 2D and 3D cases, you can just draw them out and count them. That's the most straightforward way to do it. But we need to be much more clever. We need to think, what does an edge look like in terms of coordinates? And that's not immediately obvious. Let's have a look at these two vertices here, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1. These are connected by an edge. And basically what this edge does is we take a step from this vertex to this vertex, in a straight line, here it's in our y direction. And this step kind of corresponds to swapping from 0 to 1 here. And the other coordinates stay the same. If we have a look at another example of an edge, maybe 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 0, you'll find that we've actually got the same kind of structure here, where your x and your z coordinates are staying the same, but then you've got difference just of your y coordinates. And if you look at two that aren't connected, say the origin here, 0, 0, 0, and this one up here, 1, 0, 1, these aren't connected by an edge. And what that means is there's no way to get from one to the other in a single step. You've got to go along two edges. You could go along this one and then up this one. And that's because we've got a difference of two coordinates. So there's no edge for these, but then there is an edge for each of these. So basically what we're concluding is the edges correspond to a difference of only one coordinate. So if you've got two vertices that differ, you've only got one coordinate different, 
then they'll be connected by an edge in this setup. So now we need to try and think, how are we going to count up, how are we going to calculate how many edges there are going to be? So let's have a look, see if we can imagine what a generic picture for an edge looks like. Well, you could, diff, you could differ your x1, or your x2, or your x3, all the way up to xn. That could be your one that you swap between 0 and 1. So let's say we pick x1 here. So you've got n choices for one that you fix as swapping between 0 and 1. And then once you've picked this, say you're going to have, OK, this is going to be a 0 in one of your coordinates, and it's going to be a 1 for your other vertex. And we've still got another n minus 1 coordinates to place. So we've got, for each of these, it's the same sort of picture as before, 2 times 2 times 2. This is 2 to the n minus 1 possibilities here. So you've got n choices for the one that you vary. So you could vary x1, you could vary xn, you could vary x7. And then once you've picked one of these, you've got another 2 to the n minus 1 choices for how you're going to vary that. So what we're going to conclude here is you've actually got n multiplied by 2 to the n minus 1 edges on an n-dimensional hypercube. So for example, in three dimensions, this n is 3. You've got a choice of whether you vary your x, your y, or your z. And then once you fix that, you've got another 2 to the 3 minus 1, so another four choices of how you place your other coordinates. And this also works for the square and for any higher dimension n. So now that we've looked at edges and vertices, next thing we'll have a look at is how many faces does an n-dimensional hypercube have. So let's start just by looking at an example face, the one at the front here of the 3D cube. So we need to know basically what does a face look like in terms of coordinates. So we know that we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, we've got 0, 0, 1, and we've got 1, 0, 1. So you notice here all of your y entries are exactly the same, they're all 0, and we're allowed to vary our x and our z entries. So where we've seen before that an edge corresponds to varying just one of your coordinate entries, keeping everything else fixed, a face corresponds to varying two of your coordinate entries and keeping everything else fixed. So let's write this out. Faces correspond to varying two coordinates with everything else fixed. So let's think, how can we actually count up how many faces there are in an n-dimensional hypercube? So we have a look at our general kind of picture, x1, x2, x3, up to xn. Basically what we need to do is we need to pick two of these coordinate entries which we're going to allow to vary and that will give us our face and then everything else needs to be fixed and that will give us one face and then we need to think how many faces actually are there. So let's say for example we pick x1 and x2 as the ones that we vary. So how many choices are there of pairs out of n? This is just kind of your definition of n choose 2. So you've got n choose 2 pairs to vary. And then actually for each of these, so for each of these pairs, you've still got a remaining n minus 2 coordinates which you need to fix. So you've got two choices for this one, two choices for x4 and so on, and two choices for xn as well. So for each of these pairs that we fix, you've got, so for each of these, it's 2 to the n minus 2 options for our fixed coordinates. So n choose 2, and then for each of these you get 2 to the n minus 2, which gives us a total of n choose 2 multiplied by 2 to the n minus 2 faces on an n-dimensional hypercube.
that's very nice. So we're working in n dimensions, so we could actually look at how many higher dimensional hypercubes are contained within a hypercube. So for example, if we want to look at how many k dimensional hypercubes are contained in an n dimensional hypercube where k is less than or equal to n, we can apply exactly the same procedure as before. So let's look at x1, x2, so on, up to xn. All, what I'll do is I'll write in xk, xk plus 1, so I've got the right kind of thing to point at. So for our sort of two-dimensional hypercube, we were allowed to vary two of our coordinate entries. For our one-dimensional hypercube, which is the line or an edge, you're only allowed to vary one of those. And for your zero-dimensional hypercube, the point, you're not actually allowed to vary any. So for our k-dimensional hypercube, what we're going to do is we're going to vary k of these. So how many choices of k have we got to vary? So you need to pick k entries of our coordinates out of a total of n. So you've got a choice of n choose k options here. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to fix the remaining others. So how many options have we got to fix? We've got 2 to the power of n minus k. So you've got two options here, two options for the next one. Multiply all these twos together, you've got n minus k, total number of those. So the number of k-dimensional hypercubes in an n-dimensional hypercube is just n choose k multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus k. So this is k hypercubes. Oh, that's very neat. So now we've worked out not just how many edges faces it's got, but how many higher dimensional hypercubes are contained in a higher dimensional hypercube. And what we'll do just to finish off is count up across all the different dimensions. So how many zero dimensional hypercubes have we got? How many points? How many lines? How many faces? How many 3D cubes? All the way up to n dimensions. So there'll only be one n dimensional cube contained in an n dimensional cube, the cube itself. How many have we got in total? So the total number of, we'll call these sub hypercubes. If we write these out, how many points are there, first of all? Well, we know that that's 2 to the power of n. And think of it in terms of this a zero dimensional hypercube, n choose 0 is 1. 2 to the power of n minus 0. This is nice. It fits with our formula. So n choose 0 multiplied by 2 to the n minus 0. How many edges are there? We know that this was n times 2 to the n minus 1. And we know that n is equal to n choose 1. So how many options are there for choosing 1 to vary, one of your coordinate entries to vary out of a total of 9? We add all of these up so your generic elements in this sum is n choose k, 2 to the n minus k, and then we go all the way up to n, where you know that there's only one n-dimensional hypercube contained in an n-dimensional hypercube, and I can write this as n choose n, so you, you have to vary all n of your coordinate entries, and then there aren't actually any to fix, so this is 1 times 1, which gives us our 1. Okay, so let's write this in a more compact way. This is much nicer use the sigma notation. So sum of k equals 0 to n, n choose k, 2 to the power of n minus k. And this is starting to look a lot like some sort of binomial expansion. But the binomial expansion of what? We've got 2 to the n minus k, we need something to the power of k. So what I'm going to do here is, to be a bit cheeky, and add in a 1 to the power of k. So that doesn't change the value of any of this. Then hopefully it's clear then that this is actually a binomial expansion of 2 plus 1 to the power of n, which is of course just 3 to the power of n. This is, this is really amazing, this is really nice. So you've got how many sub-hypercubes you count across all the different dimensions, going from 0 all the way up to n, you've got 3 to the power of n of those sub-hypercubes. 
And using our coordinate approach, we can sort of understand this. It doesn't just come from nowhere. So if you imagine we're picking a generic k-dimensional hypercube where we don't know what k is, we're allowed to vary that as well. We need to count up how many different sub-hypercubes are there in our n-dimensional cube. So we've got x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn. Now for each of these coordinate entries, you've got three choices. You can, you can fix it and give it a 0 or a 1, or you can vary it. So I'll just put a v here. So it can either be a fixed 0, it can be a fixed 1, or it can vary between 0 and 1. So for example, if this one varies, all the others are fixed, we've got an edge. If you allow three of them to vary and you fix all the others, then you've got a three-dimensional cube as part of your larger cube. So here you can fix this as a 0 or a 1, or you can vary it. This one you can fix it as a 0 or a 1. Vary it. Same again for all of these. They can be a 0 or 1, or it can be varied. And if we want to count up how many have we actually got of each of these, well, you've got three options for your first coordinate entry. We multiply this by three options for the second one. So maybe you vary the first one, you fix this one as a 0, your third one, maybe you fix this as a 1, and so on. And then finally, you've got three options for your last one as well. So hopefully this is quite a nice way to see where does this 3 to the power of n formula come from. It's quite intuitive in terms of the coordinate setup here.